I had two problems when I walked around the restaurant. Number one, I had no idea what to look for, so I forced my eyes to dart everywhere. At least my guests wouldn't know that I didn't know what I was doing. And number two, being new in town, I knew very few people and felt pretty silly. But in all the movies I had seen, good restaurateurs walked around all knowingly. So I felt I might as well play the role. I quickly noticed Sir John wearing a white dinner jacket with a black velvet bow tie. With him was Colonel Russ Hoff and a woman that I judged to be about mid-fifties. I must say that Sir John was a striking man because of his size and that head of white hair. Add to that a loud and distinct British accent, put him in a white dinner jacket in an elegant dining room, and you really have a dramatic effect to say the least. Central casting in Hollywood could not have done better. As I approached the table to say hello, I immediately noticed a bottle of Don Perignon. But of course. I was introduced to Irene, Sir John's secretary for 20 years, and he invited me to have a glass of champagne with him. Sir John was talking about his experiences during World War II where he played an important part with the CIA and had been consequently decorated. I sat through the entire meal with them, fascinated by the stories of intrigue during the war. Everybody in the restaurant noticed Sir John because he spoke with such a loud and distinctive voice. After dinner, I joined them in the back of the lounge for an after-dinner drink. I was fascinated when Sir John spoke about his Arabian horses, his turquoise mines in Arizona, his current acrimonious divorce, and his desire to get away from it all in the desert. I went home that night feeling honored to have the likes of Sir John staying in my hotel. The next three days passed uneventfully with my illustrious guest. He took all of his meals in the restaurant and always made his presence known. He was constantly accompanied by his secretary and the colonel. The third night he was there, we were having a drink at the bar when Frank Sinatra walked in. Immediately, Sir John went up to him, shook his hand, and reminded Mr. Sinatra that they had met at one of Frank's command performances for the Queen of England. Mr. Sinatra acknowledged the comment, was very courteous, and proceeded with his own party to the lounge area. Sir John then recounted all the brilliant details of that night, emphasizing the fact that whenever he was in England, the Queen always invited him to all the command performances. In the few days that Sir John had been at the Ingleside Inn, he managed to make sure that everyone, both employees and customers, were aware of his story. He talked about his illustrious career with the CIA, being knighted by the Queen of England, his turquoise mines, his stable of Arabian horses, and the very unpleasant divorce he was in the midst of. Several times a day, people would call and ask, Is Sir John for real? I satisfied all questions by pointing to his two Rolls Royce cars and mentioning that he had paid me in advance. In addition, the fact that Colonel Russ Hoff was his constant companion seemed to verify his credibility. Colonel Russ Hoff was well known in Palm Springs. During the first ten days, Sir John firmly established himself as visiting royalty, and the word quickly spread that the Ingleside Inn was the place for royalty. As he became more at home, the more of a character he became. He requested 100 sets of hotel stationery so that he could inform all of his royalty and celebrity friends that the Ingleside Inn was the only place for them. Sensing I was new to the business with no following, he at once took a personal interest and assured me that he would help to make the Ingleside Inn into what I dreamed it to be. Nobody could have been a better goodwill ambassador. Whenever he went to shops, parties, etc., he would announce he was permanently residing at the Ingleside Inn. Sir John, being the dashing and flamboyant character he was, completely took Palm Springs by storm, and he was invited to almost all of the social events. Arriving one morning at 6 a.m., I found Sir John swimming in the hotel pool, and he informed me that he swam every morning, and that's how he was able to maintain a body that belied his 72 years.